Hello YouTube, what is up guys, it's George LFC here and welcome back to another episode of the Liverpool career mode. We are back on deadline day and um, we're going to try to push a couple of transfers in, not too many because our team is pretty much set. Um, it's basically going to be just some contract renewals and nothing too interesting. However, um... As you can see, my channel has been rebranded. I've changed the name, and I have changed, um, yes, yeah, so I've changed the name, changed some of the design art, and just wanted to just get a new branding out because of the uh, series that I am going to bring um, out in the coming uh, weeks and months. Uh, and due to that, because I had that like George NFC affiliation, it was affiliated to just a club. But now it's going to be more than just sports. It's going to be um some some clothes and all uh, fashion, some food stuff. So that's why I have refined it, and now it isn't just specified to Liverpool. It's opened it up um to other possibilities. So that is why I've changed it. Um, some of you guys might not like it. Some of you guys might. Um, but definitely there's going to be some interesting content coming out. In the coming weeks and months. So, um, first game, I really just I will have the background at the back. We're gonna go and play a game against Tottenham, um, and I just want to talk to you guys about what happened with Liverpool in real life, and that is the miracle at Anfield. We had the Istanbul miracle. Now we have the Anfield miracle coming back from four. Um, three goals and winning 4-0 and qualifying for the final for the second year running. So many thoughts, so many emotions and just heart attack material. And uh, where do we start? But first of all, I did not expect anything from that game. I thought, yeah, we might win 1-2-0, 1-0 max. Alright, well, especially when I heard Salah and Firmino not playing, we had Mane, we had no attacking force, well that's what we thought, we have Origi, which isn't pro who isn't a prolific scorer, and Shakiri, who was fantastic, however, he hasn't been playing much, so his form is probably not at its best, um, and wow, wow, Shakiri was a bit off, but he did... Uh, get that fantastic assist to Wijnaldum for the header, but Origi, let's start with him. He must have been told by his agent that no clubs are interested in you, and if you want any chance of playing the best football, you have to show something at the end of this season. And this boy has just done that. He has scored some of the most vital goals in our season this year, and has kept... Kept some hope. He scored that Everton goal. He was there to poach that. He scored that goal um, against Newcastle. And now he has scored two goals against Barcelona to knock him out. Messi's probably thinking, who the hell is Origi? Origi. I wonder what the odds were. Origi, two goals, plus Liverpool to win 4 0. That would have been as more as, you know, funny to say we're reversing now. Leicester, Leicester's chance of winning the Premier League. Um, Oh my god, unbelievable things. As you can see, we are going to get this win here, simming it with Salah and Dybala getting a goal. But back on to uh, what we were saying, it was just Origi. He, he played such a good game. His hold-up play was fantastic. He was pressing 24-7. It was like Firmino. His pressing was just immense. All game was pressing him. Pressing him, pressing, pressing him. That boy did not stop running. Absolutely fantastic performance by Divock. And, yeah, it's, it's pretty much, I reckon he has earned himself to stay at the transfer, um, the next transfer window coming. And I reckon he, he's pretty much guaranteed that Sturridge will be, will keep, live. but obviously we're going to need some firepower off the bench. And he's proven that he can do that. And, you know, I'm... Um, very sure that we're wanting to be winning some more uh, silverwares, um, such as the FA Cup, which we haven't really paid much attention to. So you know, he 
you need strikers like that who can play those um, less viable games, but get us over the line and put us into the deep stages of those tournaments. So I think Dignock is definitely staying. I think Sturridge, sadly, is going just the injuries, man. What a play he was for that season pushing for the league. And the season before that is all show why. We should be excited and finish the end of it the other season. But yeah, just injuries, injuries. He lost his pace. He lost, obviously, playing football one week, getting injured for another month. You know, it's just. It's not good, it's not good, it's just such a talented career to me, which was such at a high, it's just, place, hasn't it? the manager just stopped the doing it, it's very, very sad, been a feature but, um, his team. Yep, and, uh, yes, Divock played fantastic, and uh, Matip as well, Matip for both legs, in the first leg he definitely, definitely, 100% played better than Van Dijk, and the second leg, if not again, He's played better than Van Dyke. You know, he has played fantastic in both legs, and you know that is only promising to going ahead in the final and in the last uh, leg of the um, final match week in the Premier League. But um, yeah, some fantastic performances. Uh, also, Trent Alexander Arnold, pff, what a player he is going to be. He's so young. Once he gets the tendencies of you know, sometimes being caught, which is he's only like 20. So, you know, just imagine the play he's going to be when he's 25, 26. So, we have a real gem in him. Alisson, proving why he's the top three best goalkeepers in the world and why he is now better than De Gea in current form. I don't care what anyone says. Alisson is the man. He is the boss. Best goalkeeper in the Premier League now, hands down, in my opinion. And whoever people say Edison, well, look at Brazil. They don't pick Edison, they pick Alisson because Alisson is the better goalkeeper. Yeah, he's better on the ball, but... You know, who's better goalkeeper wise and that is Alisson um, and that that is why he's number one over Edison in in National League and that's why he's for me the best uh, goalkeeper in V League um, and yeah so some fantastic performances by Naldem as well he just turned the place on fire some mesmerizing skill work and Mane as well yeah he didn't get on on the score sheet, but every time he got the ball, just directness, just pace, just precision in his dribbling, and what a player he has turned into this season. But yeah, just oh, still like, two days now, and it's still just like wow, we've, we've somehow from us realizing that we are out of the Champions League, for us realizing that the possibilities of us winning the league is so. so Small to where in the final to if we just did that to Barca, who says that by uh, who says that Brighton can't get a draw out of Man City? You know, if you see their results, it's very, very tight games. A lot of two one ers, one one ones, one nilers, a lot of draws. Um, even against top sides, he they've they've done they've done well. They've gotten some good results from them. So, who's not to say that that's not possible? Who's not to say you know they got kicked out of the FA Cup by them? Who's not to say that they're wanting to get a a result from them? You know, yeah, they kicked them out of the FA Cup. They're probably the biggest chance of winning any silverware. What's not to say that they don't want to get a draw and have a possibility of Man City not winning the league? Or celebrating on their home pitch, man. Like it's just the possibility is there. I know it's very, very, very small chance, but now after this win, it has put the possibility that wow, we might actually um, do something. Just quickly, we did get the, um, the sort of result of that Tottenham game, but um, yeah, who who's to say no? Used to say no, but you know, for, for me, it's it's hoping that Man City don't get a very very early goal. That's vital. Um, and you know, let's say if they go half time and it's still a draw, and let's say if we get a goal or two, that's gonna one hundred percent go to the Man City bench. It is one hundred percent gonna go to them 
They're going to know the result of our game. It like we are going to know the result night. of their game throughout the entire day, step by fans. step. Match because we're the team for Champions League. League first Who will get off to a flying so start? It's basically it's catch up from there. They face Paris Saint -Germain. So, um, it's coming up live some interesting here weeks ahead. Some very nervy games ahead. Two massive, massive games. And the final, the final, the we are favourites, we have to win. There's no excuses to losing to Tottenham on their first Champions League final of all time. You cannot do it, like I'm sorry, it is not possible. I think season has been tonight. must, it is must win. So now we are going to get into our Champions League game and um, you do play PSG and it's going to be a very, very stout match there. We're going to see this. Um, but you know, it's actually the first time I was actually playing with these Champions League overlays and stuff. But the EA, the job that they've done is just from the sideline sponsorships to the waving at the back, they have done a fantastic job on this. Definitely have to admit that. Starting 11. Would you call it 4-5-1, Lee? Yeah, I really like this formation, Derek. 4-2-3-1, really. Two central midfield players supplying support to a three ahead of them, and then a lone striker with a number 10 just behind him. Well, words that resonate with football fans the world over, whether Liverpool supporters or not. This is Anfield. Well, it is, and that is the cop behind the goal. Probably one of the most famous, iconic stands in world football. Introducing the Paris Saint-Germain starters. And they are a team, Lee, known for their aggressive high pressing. Well, absolutely, that takes a lot of hard work, a lot of organisation, force the opposition to make early passes, the weakness of it, you beat the high press, you can get ex So yeah, where do you think uh, Liverpool will finish? Do you think we're going to finish first? Do you think we're going to finish second? Comment that below. And do you think we are going to beat Tottenham in the final? It's probably the first time, other than the Sevilla uh, Europa League final, that we have been first, like, favourites to actually win a final for for one, so it is, we are normally we are the underdogs going into into a game of this magnitude, but this time we are definitely the favourites. The bookies show it all, and you know the season that we've had shows. You know we are a different class above Tottenham. It shows we are we can possibly like finish. I think twenty four points above them, and their first is going to be like twenty four points difference between us and Tottenham so it shows that we are on another level than them and it's just about on game day winning and showing that we are the better team you know we've been there we've been in the final last year so you know we've got that experience but Tottenham this is the first Champions League final we've ever been to this is something else I guarantee you you know they'll say they're fine but once that anthem once that anthem starts playing, they're not realise they are in the Champions League final and they're playing a team that has won it five times. You know, and a team that has come from a loss who are definitely wanting to have vengeance. So, you know, that is the position that we are in. And then that's the position they're in. So wherever, you know, um, copes with the pressure more is going to be the winner. You know, playing the football that they're we're supposed to play and not over playing it and for me that's what's going to be the difference of the game but you're going to see we're going to have a couple of wholesale changes and then we're going to do a fantastic counter-attack with Oxlade Chamberlain to Sessegnon but what is that shot Sessegnon man and then we are going to go again with another counter-attack Oxlade Chamberlain he came off the bench and he was electric the boy dribbles past a couple 
does a little thing pass to Mohamed Salah and bang we have beat and PSG in the first game of our Champions League group stages and after such a young miss man we should have scored that goal but Mohamed Salah finishes a great piece of directness and pace from Oxlade Chamberlain fantastic little ball to Salah look at that and great finish on the left peg Another mistake by Buffon, I think he's become a bit too old, Buffon mate, I think you should pack it up, you ain't gonna win the Champions League after goalkeeping like that. And that's it, Mohamed Salah scores his first goal of the Champions League campaign, he scores our first goal of the Champions League campaign, and we are home. We are going to grab, boys, our first points of the group stages, which is a fantastic result against PSG. Uh, the game was pretty boring, not much happened, basically all the highlights I showed is what happened, it was really cagey, but when it mattered, Mohamed Salah has put the ball behind the net, so we have gotten the three points, so we beat um, Leicester, Tottenham was a very tough game, but now we have beaten PSG, so some fantastic results, we're getting to where we should be, and getting um, the results which we are expected to be getting by the board and by the fans. So yeah guys, if you like this video, please like, subscribe and share. And probably the next time I uh, upload a career mode video, it is going to be after the final game of the EPL season. So we'll discuss what happens, what madness happens, what possibility of a miracle happens. Um, so yeah, we will discuss that and also my uh, I have a very very special uh, foot foot um, ultimate ultimate team episode so that will be coming out as well so anyway guys if you like this video as I said please like subscribe show some support and as always guys remember relax have a euros and I will be back